In today's video, we get to see an unexpected find within heart-shaped urns in a museum full of things that are not for the faint of heart. Severed Hands A team of archaeologists excavating a palace in Egypt's ancient city of Avaris uncovered a shocking find. Archaeologists discovered 16 human hand skeletons buried in four trenches. Two of the pits, positioned in front of what appears to be a throne room, each hold one hand. The 14 remaining hands are housed in two more pits built slightly later in an outside region of the palace. But the most shocking part, they're all right hands, and there's not a single left. The majority of the hands are fairly large, and a few of them are really large, according to Manfred Bitek, project and field director of the excavations. According to Bitek, in the most recent edition of the periodical Egyptian archaeology, the hands appear to be the first physical evidence of a procedure attested in ancient Egyptian texts and art in which a soldier would deliver the cut-off right hand of an adversary in return for gold. Okiku Aikichi Suzuki, a 17-year-old Japanese boy, purchased a doll for his 3-year-old sister, Kikuko, in 1918. The child was smitten with her new doll and spent hours playing with her. She was so obsessed with her doll and refused to sleep without it. After a few months, the girl died of a cold. The family was heartbroken since they cherished the little girl. Out of affection, they built a shrine for her and placed the doll within. As the months went, the family began to notice something peculiar. The doll's hair was growing. Others speculated that its mouth was gradually widening and that it was developing human teeth as well. The family determined that the doll was possessed by Kikuko's restless soul and constructed a temple to house her. Okiku is the name of the doll, which is also known as the Haunted Doll of Hokkaido. Visitors from all over the world are welcome at the shrine, and they report that the doll is still growing hair and that her mouth is now partially open. Trophy Heads A study employing specimens from Chicago's Field Museum sheds new light on the subject, demonstrating that trophy heads were collected by people who lived in the same area and were part of the same culture as those who collected them. These people lived between 2,000 and 1,500 years ago. Because holes in the skulls allowed the heads to be hanging from braided ropes, archaeologists believe that the severed heads were trophies. For the past century, people have argued about what they imply. Trophy heads in the field collection were collected by prominent American anthropologist Alfred Luis Kroeber. These were found from the dry southern Peruvian coast, Nazca Drainage, more than 80 years ago. He also collected the remains of some deceased who had been buried normally. In certain cases, the trophy heads were buried beside their owners. Researchers hypothesized that if the trophy heads were war spoils, they would have come from people living somewhere else in the Nazca area. Following some testing, the results clearly demonstrate that the donors of the trophy heads came from the same area as those who kept the trophies. Wooden Toe A single large toe reveals important information about ancient medicine. This is due to the toe being a 3,000-year-old wooden prosthesis discovered linked to a female mummy in an ancient Egyptian funeral site. According to the researchers, the toe is one of the world's earliest prosthetic devices. It's known as the Cairo toe, or the Greville Chester Great Toe. A careful examination of the digit has now revealed fresh information regarding the Cairo toe. The wooden toe had been repaired multiple times, according to the researchers. The researchers discovered that the wearer, a priest's daughter, intended the toe to look natural and be pleasant to wear based on the painstaking design of the ancient prosthesis. The early Iron Age prosthesis was discovered in a tomb cut inside an ancient burial chapel at Sheikh Abdel Graveyard Cornus Hill, west of Luxor, Egypt. The chapel was part of a series of rock-cut graves created for upper-class people close to the royal family, according to the expert. Le Musée des Molages This warehouse turned museum is dedicated to molage, wax representations of diseased body parts. It boasts two stunning levels of nothing but wax models of diseased flesh. The museum, which opened in 1867, began with sketches and images of skin ailments. After experimenting with paper mache models of diseases, the museum employed a wax fruit modeler named Barretta. Over the next 40 years, the fruit modeler turned disease maker created over 3,500 wax models of pus-filled, boil-covered, rash-infected skin. Today, the museum houses the world's most important dermatological wax collection, and anyone interested in the junction of art and science, or simply wishing to witness a dizzying assortment of awful diseases that may happen to one's skin, here is without a doubt the place to visit. This one-of-a-kind museum invites both healthcare experts and curious visitors, as long as they're people who aren't faint of heart, of course. Lucy the fossils of an early human ancestor are discovered in northwestern Ethiopia on November 24, 1974. 
The remains, dubbed Lucy, revealed that humans were walking upright over three million years ago. The discovery was uncovered at the Hadar Paleontological Site in northeastern Ethiopia by anthropology professor Donald Johansson and his research assistant Tom Gray. In the years since Lucy's discovery, at least 13 other hominins have been discovered at Hadar and called the first family. Lucy, it turned out, was a member of a previously undiscovered species of hominin, Australopithecus afarensis. Lucy, like all hominins, was characterized in part by bipedal locomotion or walking upright. Her distal femur was inclined so she could walk one leg at a time. Her knee joints were large enough to support the extra weight of standing on two limbs instead of four. And her spine curvature might allow her to maintain a permanent upright position. Following a five-year tour in the U.S., Lucy's fossil is now housed alongside other early hominid fossils at the National Museum of Ethiopia in Addis Abeba, Ethiopia. Dinkanesh, her Ethiopian name means you are marvelous. Mummy Juice The unsettling red liquid that's gathered around three decomposing mummies unearthed beneath a 2,000-year-old burial chamber in Alexandria, Egypt's historic port city, has taken on a life of its own. The sight of three floating skeletons in the soup's murky broth fueled speculations that the fluid, called mummy juice, possessed magical or curative properties. Authorities also determined that the liquid was not mummy juice with an elixir of life, or red mercury, but rather something far more mundane, sewage water. The unpleasant, or in this case, stinky truth, however, has not discouraged believers, spurring an internet campaign. More than 16,000 people have signed a petition on Change.org titled, Let the People Drink the Red Liquid from the Dark Sarcophagus. It's frightening to think that there are folks willing to consume such a questionable beverage. Wouldn't drink that even if you gave me a ton of money. Now it's time for the day's best pick. We'll be taking a look at a creepy looking statue that's part of a country's religion. Chamunda Jajpur. An 8th century AD Chamunda sculpture from Jajpur, Odisha, India, now on display at the Odisha State Museum, India. Chamunda represents bareness and ruin. Her hair's piled into a chingan and adorned with a skull and crescent moon headpiece. She scowls, her teeth bare, and her eyeballs protrude menacingly from hollow sockets in her skeletal face. She wears a snake as a necklace, its coils echoing the bands of decaying skin that sag beneath her collarbone. A scorpion, a sign of sickness and death, is located just above her navel on her thin torso. She apparently once carried dangerous things in her twelve missing arms hands. Chamunda is naked, save for some short, diaphanous dotty that partially conceals the two tiger skins that hang from her waist to her knees. The sculpture's starkness and unrelenting terror symbolize one part of Indian spirituality. Girolamo Sagato Girolamo Sagato was an introverted loner who went on to become a cartographer, Egyptologist, and naturalist. In 1818, he went on an excursion to Egypt and played tourist, writing his name on the Temple of Dender Sagato, had himself dropped into a pyramid in Egypt and emerged three days later an altered man enamored with mummification. In 1823, he returned to Italy and stayed in Florence, where he invented a technique for mineralizing human bones that preserved the natural color and suppleness of his materials. The preservation of anatomical specimens in as close to their fresh state as possible was critical to research, and Sagato had undoubtedly found a technique to do so. But he was perhaps too successful, as people began to refer to him as Il Piet Rificatore, or the Petrifier. Sagato's ambitions and desires of being recognized and accepted were destroyed. He set fire to his papers and died soon after, at the age of 44. His secrets are kept at his tomb and sent to Crush, where the inscription says, Here wrought Girolamo Sagato, who would be whole and petrified if he hadn't taken his secrets to the grave. He was a glory of human knowledge and a gloriously unhappy human. Incan Mummy One look at this still figure and you think she's just sleeping. She is, however, more than just sleeping. She's been mummified. The torso of this frozen person is so detailed that it sends shivers down your spine. Her skeleton is claimed to be one of the best preserved in the world. The Incan mummy was discovered with two other children over 20,000 feet above sea level on the lip of a volcano. She was claimed to be so beautifully preserved that lice were still in her hair. The mummies, also known as La Dancella or the Maiden, is that of a teenage girl who died in the Andes Mountains more than 500 years ago during a ritual sacrifice. Archaeologists who discovered the mummified remains in Argentina in 1999 claimed that the girl and two other kids were abandoned on a mountaintop to perish from the cold as sacrifices to the gods. See you all next time!